Today I'm looking at my first case from Be Quiet. We've got the Dark Bay 700 here to show you today. There's actually been a couple of launches since this one, most notably the 901, but this does retain a lot of the features that you'll see in that case, and there's actually a slightly smaller footprint as well. So today I'm going to do my usual unboxing and overview, then at the end I'll tell you about some plans I've got for it in some builds. We've got a bag for this one, so we're going to have a nice reveal. Ta da! Any more? Ugh. More static, jeez. You also get a three year warranty with this and it also inverts, which is something that I'm very tempted to do for my build. Um, currently sells for about 200 pounds, 200 euros. Available at most online retailers. Just a little quick thing. We've got some really nice ventilation on the top. The brushed metal is absolutely gorgeous. And as you can see on the front, we've got this little clear section. This actually has RGB in it as well, which you can obviously set. I'd uh, be quite used orange in their examples, because obviously there, that's their logo, but you can set it to whatever color you fancy. We have got a hub built into this as well, which will explain more as we get there. And let's cover the front panel as we're pretty much there already. So I'm actually gonna go right to left for this one. We've got two USB A's. These are USB 3.2. Then we've got some lighting control buttons a big power button which has got illumination behind it. Then we've got a microphone and headphone jack, USB type C, which is USB 3.2 Gen 2. And then we've got a fan controller. There's a couple of different options that you've got with that switch. The auto will mean that it uses the PWM sense wire that's on the case onto the motherboard, and then all the fans will be controlled by the motherboard itself. And then the other three options are specific RPM modes that I'll put on the screen now. So you've got a couple of options, but I think personally, I'd just leave it on auto. Nothing really to talk about on the front panel, just got a nice brushed piece there again. Uh, and then a be quite logo at the bottom that is nice and shiny and we'll leave the plastic on for now though now if you want to get into the fans and things you can pop this panel off it's a nice sound ending foam on the other side also some push pins as well for the rgb to go around the side so we've got a big old dust filter which we can lift out to then easily clean air's drawn in by the side vents and then push through the gaps we've got a pre-installed silent wings 3 140 mil fan that's the pwm version you can put an additional two in as well so you can support up to 420 mil radiator alternatively you can use 120 mil fans put a 360 in there if you'd rather there's also another one at the bottom that runs the entire width and i'll show you that now so if we go even further we've got the bottom of the case some nice big feet nice depth for air to get through as well there's also space for 120 or 140 mil fan so going to the rear of the case, we've got another pre-installed 140mm fan again, so on at Wings 3. We've got eight expansion brackets and also two verticals. You want to do a vertical mount. No riser cable included though, so just bear that in mind. Then further down, we have got our power supply mount. You get, this supports up to a 285mm power supply in this case. So we've finally gone around the case. Now let's get inside it. Big old piece of glass for this one and then four thumb screws also has a little retainers as well if you're opening this with it stood up glasses are going to fall out and just smash and so good thing to see this is actually a four mil piece of glass i did measure it as i took it out because it did feel a little bit thicker so really nice quality we've got a big accessory box let's get this out some velcro cable ties we've got all of our usual screws for mounting and things there's also some longer screws in there as well i'm sure we'll find out what they're for in a minute we've got an extra drive cage this one does clip in on the right hand side of the case here so you can kind of hang it so looking into this case you can see the sheer width of room that's available you could do a really thick radiator on the front if you wanted to but this does support up to an eatx motherboard got some really nice grommets on the sides like i said with the slates that you can put in for the hard drives you can buy extras additionally now if you want to you can actually take all of these side panels out and actually put in some additional fans it will support up to a 360 mil radiator but i realistically don't see people doing that because you've got a solid side panel on the back so there's not going to be any air through going through it's only going to be maybe little bits of air that come from gaps and cracks and things so i don't really see it being overly useful for that but it's there if you need it before we move on let's talk about tolerances so the big old chonk 40 80 strix will fit in absolutely no problems at all absolutely ample room for even the biggest of graphics cards then for your cpu towers you got up to 190. now there's a couple of little screws i'm just taking off at the top of the case and that will allow you to take out the top radiator mount so again you can do up to 360 mil for this one you can do two 140s if you'd rather but you can obviously put everything on there aoo radiators fans just on their own and then just put it into the mount and then slide that all in without having to try and hold and screw it in at the same time so pretty nifty so even when i slide that in you've still got loads of room for any cables that you want to run up through the top then the grooves at the top of the case is the only place that that hot air can actually escape so might be something you want to think about a little bit just before you actually build um, maybe don't go too high with your skew or don't put too much of an overclock on 
because obviously that heat's got to go somewhere and it's got to try and work its way along. Then just taking the case, we've got some room at the bottom to run any cables through, maybe for USB 2 headers, front panel and things like that. The front of the power supply shroud is solid, but we do have a couple of removable panels. There's also space for a 120, 140mm fan on the other part. There's also another one at the end to take off if you're going to put a, maybe a thick radiator in, obviously you're going to need to remove that. Now you see these three screws on the left, there's actually six on the back to take off. Then if you take off these three, you can actually take out the whole motherboard tray. Now this is intended when you flip the motherboard over because you obviously have to set it upside down so it's inverted. Um, but I suppose you could put everything on there and then install it if you'd rather. But it actually allows me to say the uh, old quote, the motherboard tray is removable. So opening the back, we've got some really nice thick sound deadening foam again. Here's all of our front panel connections with a 12 volt RGB header, USB type C. This is the PWM sense wire. Got a front panel and reset switches and things like that. Hard drive activity. There's our USB 3, we've got SATA for power, then front panel audio. Here's a little hub that I mentioned at the start. So we've got additional support for another four fans, so you can do up to a six on this one. There's also an additional 12 volt RGB header. Hopefully you can see there's a couple of small switches on there as well, so you can individually control each side. So you could have silent or performance. By default, they're on silent, but you can flick those over if you want them to run a little bit faster. Of course, if you're running them on the auto mode, then that will be ran by PWM anyway. A couple more SSD slates on this side, so you can fit additional two on the back. You can obviously take that out if you want to install your CPU tower when the motherboard is installed in the case. Now the removable panels that I mentioned on the other side, you can easily just undo these and just push them out if you want to. Alternatively, you could run cables through. Maybe if you've got some extra long ones, you could just kind of like S weave it around. There's loads of cable management points on the actual case as well. So there's four down the side, some additional ones by the fan controller, there's three there. Another one at the top, which is great for the eight pins. You can just run those up the right hand side. There's a good 25 mil depth there for the cable. So obviously gives you a lot of options. There's the additional hard drive bays on the left of the power supply. So you can do an additional two, two and a half inch drives or two, three and a half inch. So then using the cage on the other side, that gives you the options of three, three and a half inch drives and three, two and a half inch or six, two and a half inch in total. So that was a look at the Dark Base 700. Loads of features, loads of potential for different builds. Personally, I think I'm going to go for a stealthy build when I do this. I have got one of their OIOs and some additional fans to put in this as well. And I think that's going to look really nice. I'll probably invert it as well. I think that's going to be the way to go for this case. Um, so I'll figure that out in the meantime. But get subscribed and ding the bell so you don't miss the video when it goes live. And of course, a big thank you to Be Quiet for sending this out for me to look at. I'll put the links in the description box if you want to pick one up. Thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think about it in the comments box. I shall see you all in the next one.